your Stripe account will trigger tons of events based on the amount of activity that's happening inside of it. And depending on your integration, well, some events might be more important than other ones are. But you might also want to assign a priority to how those events get processed. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you one strategy that you could use to prioritize how you process your Stripe events. Before diving into the implementation, let's take a second to understand how the solution is designed. In this approach, we're making use of worker pools. So there'll be one worker pool assigned to the higher priority items and another pool assigned to the other ones. Now the higher priority worker pool will have more worker instances inside of it, as well as being run on more powerful hardware. Now as events happen in Stripe, we'll set up an event destination that'll route events over into the cloud. Once it hits our message router, which essentially be a serverless function, it'll assign different priorities to those messages and publish them into our Azure Service Bus instance. Now, Azure Service Bus will look at those message properties and pass it on to the right subscription. Once the message gets where it needs to go, the workers inside of the respective pool will be able to dequeue the message and start working on it. Since the higher priority worker pool has more powerful hardware and more workers, you can imagine that the messages going into that subscription are going to get processed a lot faster than the other ones. Now, let's take a look at the implementation and see what this looks like. This is the function that will be responsible for receiving the events as they get sent from Stripe. Notice one of the first things that it does is retrieve that webhook secret and verify that this is a valid event that came from Stripe. The next thing we want to do is see, well, what type of event this is. Now, if this is a checkout session completed event, then I'm going to assign this to the high priority queue. So as I create that service bus message, I'm going to add a custom property with a value that's set to high that can be used to route it to the high priority subscription. For every other Stripe event that comes in, we'll create another message, but instead we'll add a custom property and give it a value of low, which will send it to a different subscription to get processed. Now let's see how we can set this up inside of our Stripe account. First, we'll need to retrieve the URL that we want to send those messages to. So inside of the Azure dashboard, I'm going to look for the router function that's going to receive those events. I'll select it in my list. I'll select the actual endpoint. I need to click this get function URL button. I'll copy this and then let's head over to Stripe. Here in the dashboard, I'm going to go into my integration sandbox. Next, I'll go to the developers menu and then I want to select the event destinations. I'm going to use that URL we just copied to specify where I want these events to go to. Next, I'm just going to select a few Stripe events. Payment intent succeeded. And let's grab another one. Let's grab charge succeeded as well. Right? So this event destination is going to only send those three events to our serverless function. Now I'll select webhook endpoint. I'll paste in the URL that we copied from Azure and I'll create a new destination. Next thing I'll need to do is make sure that I copy this webhook signing secret. Now I'll have to go back over into Azure. I want to make sure I add this to my secret store. So I'll go to my vaults. I'll go to secrets. And now I'll go to my webhook signing secret. I'll create a new version, paste it in there. And then now that signing secret from Stripe should be inside of this account. Now, if we head back over to my function app resource, I will go to the one that's routing those messages. If I open up the settings and select environment variables, you'll see we have an environment variable for Stripe webhook secret. If I open up the value, notice that it has a reference to that key vault secret. So that's how my function app is able to pull information from the vault and use it in an environment variable. Now let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. Back over my IDE, I'm going to open up the terminal. And I'm just going to use the Stripe trigger command to trigger a checkout session completed events. Now, since I don't have any local listeners, I'm expecting these events to get routed to my destination I set up inside of my sandbox account. If we head back over to the browser and go to the Stripe dashboard, I'll refresh this page really quickly. And if we go over to event deliveries, we can see those three event types that we set up when we created the event destination were sent over to Azure. Now let's head back over to the Azure dashboard and take a look at some of those other functions. Now this first one was set up to be used with the high priority subscription. If I search for the scale out options, you'll notice that this one doesn't have a limit. So this means as more work gets sent to that high priority subscription, the serverless runtime can spin up as many instances as it needs to get the work done. Let's head back. And let's look at the other one. This one's for the low priority subscription. I will look at the scale out rules for this. 
Here you can see that it has a maximum of 10 instances. So once we hit that 10 instance limit, it's not gonna allow the runtime to spin up anymore. So this function has a fixed scaling limit while the other one doesn't. So this means that that lower priority subscription is not gonna have as many workers in its pool and not gonna be able to process messages as fast. With event destinations, you have the ability to filter out the types of events that flow into your system. Couple that with some intelligent messaging patterns and you have the ability to really fine tune how you process your Stripe events. Now, if you wanna learn more about event destinations, make sure you check out our documentation and also make sure you check out some of the other videos we have here on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.